Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, the other day I had a look at the new Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon Edition. Today I want to look at XFCE. So XFCE is going to be a little bit different. Uh, in some cases, you might want to run this. Uh, I like XFCE for my more lower spec machines or things that I need to get a lot more oomph out of. This is the why it's used as the main desktop environment in cubes to manage everything. Is because with XFCE being managed how it is, it is super lightweight on resources out of the box. And that really is a function that we certainly want to look for. Now, refer back to my Linux Mint Cinnamon video for a lot of these things. But let's just go ahead and cover really briefly, if you missed that video, the cha major changes. Uh, Blueberry is replaced with Blue Man. Uh, because Blueberry is not really developed quite as much anymore, it used to be developed by the GNOME team uh, to be used with GNOME, but they're importing uh, Bluetooth functionality inside the GNOME settings panel, which means there's not a lot of need to develop Blueberry, and it will start to diverge off of common use for other desktop environments. And since Linux Mint needs to have something that works really well across all of the different desktop environments it uses, they chose to switch it with Blue Man, which has a lot more development from a lot more teams and is implemented in a lot more distributions and desktop environments. This should, in theory, allow to get a better uh, functionality out of your Bluetooth. If it does, let me know. I don't use a lot of Bluetooth. I had really good luck with a LG X-Boom Bluetooth speaker when I was using it at camp the other week to play some videos, but outside of that, we didn't actually have any use <laughs> for uh, with uh, Bluetooth on my devices. So, for that, um, I'll leave it to you guys to decide which one's better or not. Of course, the thumbnails uh, issues have been fixed. And they've added some more support for app images, EPUBs, MP3s, raw pictures, and uh, WebP files. And I did talk briefly about the sticky notes. We'll go ahead and talk about this when we get into running the distribution itself. Because, yeah, I took the time to learn how a sticky note application works. So, yeah, we'll show you guys what the color cycling is that's all about. I don't use the sticky note applications. Let me know in the comments if you use the sticky note applications. I mean, I don't because my desktop is just like completely full of real sticky notes. Um, I don't need sticky notes on my computer as well. So... Um, of course, we have the, the process monitors, a new icon that'll show up if some backup system or something like that's going on. And then there's other X application improvements and things like that that will show up. So let's go ahead and head on over to the, um, to the desktop itself. And um, when you talk about this, the installation, the installation is going to be exactly the same as any other Linux Mint uh, version. And so it's nothing major that uh, uh, if you've seen one Linux Mint install, you've seen them all. It has not changed significantly for several years. So we'll go ahead and leave it at that. If you're to log in, you do have the um, you do have the startup screen here and the only thing I did here is I changed the color to teal and switch it to a dark mode of course the default is light mode with green um, I just went ahead and went to the opposite end of the spectrum we have our system snapshots we have a driver manager multimedia codecs all these different things that you can have inside of here of course the multimedia codecs are it is an option to install them on the installation uh, this feature is put in here for Linux Mint Debian Edition which does not have the option to install the codecs now, this is running XFCE, and uh, it is the latest version at uh, 4.16. I don't know about the subversion. This is 4.16.3. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a newer release than that as of right now. Probably not is my guess. But as far as things function, let's go ahead and start with looking at the uh, note application before I completely forget about it. And then we'll talk about why you might want to use XFCE. Inside of your settings here and your preferences, you can show notes on all desktops or not. You can show them in the taskbar or not. And you can show it in the system tray or not. And then you can show the main window automatically. The cycle colors is really the, the change that they talked about. When you create a new note utilizing the tool down here to create a new note, it's going to, instead of randomly pick a color, it will now cycle through the colors in this order so that you'll never randomize the same note color a couple times. If you happen to use these, let me know if you do. Um, I don't ever have a real big need for the notes applications, but 
I don't know, maybe some people out there do. So why might you use XFCE? Well, it is super, super light on resources. Um, this right now is idling at 600 megabytes. It's kind of hard to see on the screen there. It's 599M out of uh, 5.8 gigs and I have in the system available. And uh, that makes it super ideal if you have a lightweight system. For example, any system that is going to be um, low RAM, low processor speed, because the desktop environment is not doing a lot in the background. This of course comes with some of the, the negatives that you're not going to be able to do online accounts. So if you want to attach a next cloud or for some reason, a Google or a Microsoft account, you will not be able to do that on XFCE where you can on cinnamon. I like the more modernality features of cinnamon. I like the integrated calendars uh, that I can very quickly just pull up the calendar on cinnamon and it'll show me a dot if there's an appointment that day things like that those are things you're not going to get in xfce but those are also things that take up a lot of system memory this will not i run xfce desktop environment through mx linux on my uh, lenovo s21 e which is a super small not very powerful computer it cost me less than a hundred dollars but it runs just as snappy as any other system and indeed this system here is snappy this isn't a virtual machine. Mind you how quickly it is working here. Let's just load up random applications. Why not? Um, so it will work very well uh, depending on your system setups. And that's a real good reason to use it. Now I'm going to use Linux Mint XFCE the next time I rebuild my banking computer, which I do every couple years, so it's due. And the reason is... Linux Mint now has the web apps application, which is very similar. Um, it's I think it's actually the same thing as what Peppermint created as the ICE applications. My banking computer currently runs Cinnamon, uh, excuse me, runs Peppermint 10. Um, it is not the new version based on Debian. It's the old version based on Ubuntu. And for that particular application, I need something that's going to work out of the box really well. And I'm going to uh, need to be able to... Um, make any quick changes. So in this case here, we've added a little web application, we've given it the address, we've selected the icon, put it in its categories. And the other thing is, um, I think that's just refreshing the icon. When you create a, uh, when you create a new one, let's go ahead and cancel on that. When you create a new one, you can set it inside of a private or incognito window. And that's the way I want it. I, I keep all of my banking um, applications separate from each other so that none of the bank cookies can know what other banks I'm dealing with. All that kind of stuff keeps things nice and separated. And then you end up with an application. You can drop it on your panel, on your desktop, or in your menu. And then this is going to enable you to load right on up into an individual page where we can kind of see um, uh, we can kind of see what's going on. Of course, you can go to the very bottom of my page at Switch to Linux. You can link to any of my other channels if you'd like to do that. Let's see if we can get that Tux Traveler over a thousand subscribers. That'd be awesome. Of course, only if you watch travel stuff. But anyway, um, that is some good applications. Uh, fixes and changes. I've not noticed any real uh, issues. The default applications that they give us. Uh, we have just basic accessories. There might be what some people consider maybe a little too much bloat. Um, but for me, I like uh, I like it because there's tools, there's image writers, there's image formatters, text editors, task managers. There's things like Redshift I never use. Uh, but there's a lot of things. Other than that, it's not an overly bloated system. We have a simple drawing application. We have pics to view your, um, uh, your images. We have hex chat, we have uh, transmission, Firefox, Thunderbird, uh, celluloid, hypnotics, uh, here's your multimedia codex. Of course, anything you don't like, you can just go ahead and uninstall it. And I wouldn't uninstall some of these applications on my banking computer. Um, but overall, I like the, the simplicity, the layout, the format of the desktop, and running Linux Mint, it works really well. We have a very nice tool here where we can manage all the different settings independently of each other. Uh, we can adjust the panel. We can put the panel on the side, on the top, on the bottom, however you, you want your 
your setup and your layout to be. So overall, that's kind of the, the thing about Linux Mint uh, XFCE. It's really good if you have a lower spec computer, if you want something more traditional, if you don't want the bells and the whistles of online accounts and things like that. XFCE is a really good option. And Linux Mint has two options for those, those one being Mate and the other one being XFCE. Of those two, I like XFCE better. Um, I've encountered more bugs in general on Mate, uh, but some people like that one better. And I'd encourage you to have a look at both of them uh, just to see which one. But this one here, hopefully uh, you like this one here with XFCE. And... Um, have a look over at uh, linuxmint.com. It should be dropping here any day now. This one is the beta, but there's not going to be a ton of differences and a ton of changes. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.